So today we have the archetype of Persephone. And if this is one of the ones that's such a huge difference between before patriarchy and after men took control. So before patriarchy, the great goddess, all of the god goddesses emerged from her. They're all part of her. So women, you know, oh, every woman is sort of the great goddess and she has Athena, she has Artemis, these other capacities, these other energies just um, emerge based on what sort of life experiences you have. And Persephone was the one with this box. Uh, no, Persephone, actually, she and her mother were out um, picking flowers. And she heard in the underworld, she heard these voices. And it was the people who were damned, the people who had been evil. And now they were roasting. <laughs> they were burning. So it is kind of interesting that a lot of the traditions have the same sort of image. And um, she, she asked her mother, what is that sound? It sounds awful. Somebody's suffering, you know? And her mother just didn't want, just like, forget it, Persephone, it ain't there. Let's talk about something else. Just pick your flowers. But she persisted. And so she found out it was the, the damned, but she felt sorry for them. She felt merciful toward them. So she wanted to be able to go down in the underworld and sort of cool their tongues with cold water, right? She had mercy. And um, so Demeter, you know, couldn't stop her. So that's why there's winter is because for three, four months a year, Persephone is down comforting the evildoers, right? So there's just this idea of forgiveness. Um, yes, you have to get punished. You did the wrong thing, but she's merciful. And then Persephone comes back and her mother's happy and all the plants grow again. So that is so different from the story after patriarchy, right? So after patriarchy, Zeus raped Demeter. And so Persephone is the product of a rape. And then uh, when they're out picking flowers, Hades sees Persephone and he's attracted to her, right? He wants her, he wants to possess her. So he asks her father, Zeus, can I take her to the underworld and make her queen of the underworld? And her father says, sure. <laughs> um, and so he rapes and abducts her. And then Demeter is grieving and she's mad and she's not gonna let anything grow. And then Zeus, it didn't even occur to him, you know, that it might upset her mother. Zeus, because I mean, I'm Zeus, I get to decide whatever. You're not supposed to have your own opinion. And then Demeter also stops letting the crops grow. And so it occurs to Zeus that actually she has some power that I don't have. Like, I can't make the crops grow. Well, then he realizes that human beings are going to starve to death. And he likes human beings because they worship him. <laughs> he, you know, he loves being worshipped. And so, geez, if Demeter is grieving. And so it's all about self-interest, right? It's just this powerful guy. And he likes handing over his daughter to some other powerful guy. And um, all of a sudden he realizes, geez, somebody, some woman has some power that I can't control. 
like reproduction, right? That's a big issue for men trying to control women's reproduction. And, um, and the only reason he really brings Persephone back is because he likes being worshiped. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't think these stories are complementary to men. My interpretation is uh, that the poet- Sorry to interrupt. Professor, Professor, could you please repeat? Like you were saying that um, who, who liked being worshiped? Zeus. Uh, so Jews, he liked being worshipped. That's why he uh, brought Persephone back. Yes. Because, okay. Uh, okay, Professor. That's, I'm glad you asked if, if it's too hard to follow. So Hera was oh, the you, wife. Professor. That's fine. Hera was the wife of Zeus, the king. And um, he liked being worshipped by human beings. And if Demeter doesn't let the crops grow, all the humans are going to die and then they won't worship him. So that's the only reason, right? He doesn't have any mercy toward her mother. Like, oh, that's right. You wouldn't be too happy about having your daughter abducted. It wasn't anything like that. It was all about him. So I think these stories are trying to point out to powerful men how ignorant they are, how oblivious they are, how much harm they do, and how much dysfunction it creates all over the society. So don't do this, right? You powerful men, you're going to be tempted to do stuff like this. Don't do it. Um, so that's what I think the stories are about. But there are plenty of scholars that think that that's just the way the Greeks were, and that was their set of values, and they, you know, accepted male domination, and that's just the way it was, like moral relativism. But it's just a terrible, terrible uh, misinterpretation. Uh, and Jungian, the kind of psychology that, that the book is based on, says that the myths are all about flushing out all those awful extreme desires we have, especially sex and aggression, and making us conscious that we have these fantasies about this, and get over it. Like, look at all the damage that does. Don't treat people like that. Um, so it's just trying to raise your consciousness of those things. So uh, a girl who, here's another story about when I first taught at AUW. I might've told you this before, but I'm getting old and maybe you forgot. <laughs> um, so uh, the story, the book is about this myth of Psyche and Eros and the fact that we often go wrong because we fall in love with our feeling of love. So in the Demeter chapter, um, when I had to leave my daughter, I was so in love with my love of my daughter that I just grieved and grieved about not being able to be with her. But when she would call me every week, I just couldn't relate to her, right? I was so distracted and I was so upset, I started talking about myself. And so that's a very good example of where I'm so self-absorbed in my own love of my daughter and my grief that I don't even relate to my daughter. <laughs> I mean, she's just a kid, she's in high school, she's talking about her week. And then um, I always started out listening, but then 
it would be, I would talk a little bit about my week and then it would get worse and worse because I was under a lot of stress. But it's just a good example of how you can get really self-absorbed and you don't want to do that. You have to balance out all these passions and you have to figure out how to be effective, right? How to really relate to real people <laughs> and get something done. Um, so um, Persephone is the one who's been victimized. Oh yeah, so when I was teaching at AUW, I, I walked into the class, that's what it's about. And I started out saying, well, when you go to a wedding, don't you just wonder if the, if the bride and the groom are just in love with the feeling of being in love and they don't really know who the other person is? And then my students looked at me and they said, Professor Beck, like the weddings we go to, we're all arranged. <laughs> and then a lot of you have been talking in your posts about all these arranged marriages. And I mean, it sounds like some of those weddings might be <laughs> pretty depressing, but I don't know, you know, if, if those young girls, uh, you know, they don't have any future, but they might actually have this wonderful wedding where they get to be in the center of attention. I don't, I don't really know what those weddings are like. Um, has anybody been to a wedding where the bride is really grieving because she doesn't want to get married? Sometimes, Sometimes. fathers forcefully gives their daughter married by their friend's son or something like that or older or their cousins they get they grieve a lot yeah okay so or, what, yes professor yesterday i read a story on my facebook like on newsfeed she said that like today is my marriage and, and i just uh, informed about the information like I, no one asked my opinion or anything else. I just, uh, I just know that today is my marriage, something like that. Yeah, I think I read in some of your posts, um, it said that uh, the mom and the daughter were preparing for a party and they were going to have this party. And it wasn't until a few hours before that she found out the party is her wedding. Um, Oh, Mahira, sometimes they love someone else. Yeah, that happens. Obviously, that could happen if you're being forced. So anyway, um, in the US, of course, we supposedly don't marry unless people are in love. But um, it doesn't always work out anyway. But with arranged marriages, that's, that's a whole nother issue. And that's the Persephone thing is all is child marriage is one of those ways that girls get victimization mentalities, right? So it's one thing to be victimized, which of course there's sexual harassment, sexual assault, rape. And we're gonna, I'm gonna have you bring examples of that. There's pornography, there's, there's all sorts of ways that men exert sexual aggression against women, or they associate sexual aggression with just physical aggression, right? They put them together, Aphrodite and Aries. And um, if women, starting when they're young, if they experience that enough, their mentality, right? They're just afraid of everything. So when you have a victimization mentality, you, you don't have any courage to go out into the world. And um, this happens in the US. I remember reading once, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. We have this welfare system. I'm not sure what you all have in your countries, but we used to have a welfare system where a woman 
who is really poor gets pregnant and the government will give her a certain amount of money. And these women were being really criticized and trashed because the youngest kid would get to be about four years old where the, the state, they would have to send them to school and then the woman would need to go and get a job and she got pregnant again, right? Well, then I found out, and there was these huge stereotypes, like these women are horrible and they're lazy and they have all these kids and blah, blah, blah. Well, then I read that 80% of them had been sexually abused in some way when they were under age. And so they are victimized, right? They, they don't, they're just terrorized, they're phobic about trying to go out in the world and be independent and function. So that's, I would imagine that most of you either already understand that, or if you do eventually, hopefully go back to your village and you try to encourage poor girls, you know, to stay in school and to, I, some of your posts talk about this too. If they've already been victimized, or if their fathers or brothers really are cruel to them, they don't have that much motivation. They don't have the courage to go to stay in school or to go somewhere else to school. You know, it takes courage for all of you to do what you've done. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at with Persephone. Now, the other thing I did want to point out before I start asking you for your comments is last time, if you remember, we talked about Hera and I just said, oh my gosh, I am not like Hera, like nothing. I had no idea. I thought I was being a good wife and then I found out I wasn't and I have no idea what wives are supposed to do. <laughs> I just thought I married my friend and we grow up together and that was great. Uh, no, somehow I just didn't get it. Um, so then you all can compare that to the women that you know. So this one, I would imagine at first you might think, well, Professor Beck wouldn't understand this because she would never, she has privilege, right? She's American, she has a PhD in philosophy. There's no way that she would have gotten victimized, right? Well, that's not true. <laughs> it just took a long time. It took a whole lot of different situations. And I didn't really figure out about sexism until I was like 35, where I started seeing a pattern in what was going on. And then I started reading all these books that I quote in the the other chapters that I didn't have you read. But um, so it can happen to anyone. Um, and the other thing I want you to understand is that as your lives go forward, you might get yourself in a situation where, you know, I got myself in a situation where I had three unplanned children. I got kicked, I got, the youngest one was showing signs of, I was under too much stress. I was teaching, I was trying to finish my dissertation. I had three kids and the teacher said, your youngest daughter is really suffering. And so I asked for an extension and they said no. So I quit and I tried to make it up to my daughter, but um, you know, it's, so I got buried in deep, right? I got really in a hole and didn't have any idea what I was gonna do. Got kicked out of graduate school. What else can I do? Um, so I, I want all of you to know that no matter how, you know, life, you, you might have some obstacles. You might feel like you got stuck somewhere along the way, but really life is long. I, I'm sure there will always be opportunities that come up no matter how buried you get in, um, I don't know, I mean, the 
wife and children thing or some other family obligations, I think eventually, given how long life is, that you will be able to do lots of really interesting things. And you can remember, but I did have a mentality where I was really afraid. I was having all these nightmares. I remember looking at my feet and telling my feet to walk one step at a time, right? And then I was crying three hours a night for my daughter. And I had these horrible dreams. I talked about that. So I don't want you to feel sorry for me. I just want you to know that it can happen to anyone, but you can recover. Like you've gotten far enough along. You've achieved enough so that if you just keep persisting, that I think you'll be able to overcome things even when you feel like you get really buried in a lot of obstacles. I think one of the blessings, of course, for me is that I had my health. I do think, you know, if you have serious health problems, that might be make things difficult. I don't know. Um, uh, but um, it's never over. Like your life is never going to be over until it's over. <laughs> but you have about 60 years. So you can recognize when you're getting a victimization mentality. You can recognize that you have these nightmares, that you're afraid. Fear has sort of gripped you. But just know it can happen to anybody. And as long as you have friends, um, if you have people supporting you, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll manage. Um, so I was, so we'll just start with the examples. Each of you have examples of somebody who is a victim, who shows signs of being like that or just has that personality type. Do you remember a woman who just sort of a man projects onto her and she just takes that and becomes whatever he wants her to be. She sort of didn't want to go to college. She just sort of, she's just not motivated. She doesn't have a sense of herself or independence. She had a mother who was very controlling and wanted to protect her from everything. She might have had a father who was um, also very domineering. So she just, um, you know, doesn't have goals, just sort of adapts, sort of um, lets herself be mothered. She lets some guy marry her. Um, she lets her kids dominate her. Like uh, this is a kind of woman whose sons can start even at a young age controlling them. On the other hand, the daughter ends up having to be the mother because she's so passive. Um, anyway, just the idea that on the one hand, it is a certain personality type, but the patriarchy really takes advantage of it and really corrupts it and abuses it. And so it you know, women get victimized a lot anyway, no matter what type they are. But when they're this type, it can really get out of control. Um, and so that that's kind of the main point. So each of you can think of somebody you know personally, and then somebody in the public eye, or if you if you read about um, child marriages, but a lot of you have already written about sexual abuse, sexual aggression, and I, when I read it, I always think that's Persephone. So at this point, you can start rethinking some of your previous examples. I tried not to, I didn't want to tell you you're wrong, but I, but I do want you to rethink so that you can figure out, yeah, all these patterns are true. And there are certain women for whom this is the prominent one. Um, and they have to know that so that they can avoid falling into just the comfort zone, right? They have to push themselves. But at their best, 
they become like counselors, right? And they can really help other women who have gone to the dark side, right? Who've gotten overcome by victimization. They can be really good therapists, right? Because they understand it. Um, so Habiba, what did you, what examples did you come up with? Are you there? All right. Um, Risti, what about you? Yeah, Professor, can you hear me clearly? Yep. Okay. So uh, I think I said it before. And so in my neighbor house, uh, there is a girl that. Uh, and she is, uh, you know, she is very, uh, I mean, she's uh, young, uh, younger than me and <laughs> don't know anything about marriages and all these stuff. But uh, the, uh, just for her family, uh, she agreed that she wants to marry. And for the boy that uh, he, uh, I mean, the boy loves uh, the girl. <laughs> I mean, when she, uh, when the boy uh, uh, shows the girl, maybe uh, in her maternal uncle house, so then the boy fall in love with her, and the girl, uh, you know, uh, don't know that. And when the boy uh, got a government job, then he offered, I mean, uh, uh, gave a proposal to the girl's family. And uh, uh, government jobs means <laughs> there is no chance that the family don't agree that I, I mean, we don't give our uh, girls to you. So, uh, I mean, the, uh, the girl don't uh, even see the boy and just uh, according to her family, she agreed. And when her parents, you know, asked her that, uh, what do you want? So uh, she said that whatever you all want. So I am agree with that. And she got married and now she has a child. But uh, I mean, she still uh, don't know about a lot of family and uh, mother characters. And she don't, you know, properly take care of her uh, child. Oh, and okay. that, Yeah. So Do you think she... I think. Do you think she's kind of like Persephone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's not a good mom because she sort of lets her kids, she doesn't sort of have a plan. Yes. Yeah, she, she's still like a child and <laughs> she had a child. So that's good. That's, that's mm -hmm. a great example. What about somebody in the public eye? Can you think of any? Uh, no, Professor. Still, I don't get. That, that's hard because uh, because Persephone isn't in the public eye, right? So yeah, yeah, it would I think the examples in the past were um, women who had committed suicide, right? They nobody knew they were suffering so much. And then they eventually just took their life. Um, or it might be an example where, um, some, let's see, what did she say? Her relation to her, oh yeah, where she's, some, her daughter has to basically be the mother, right? So there's some public family where it's kind of obvious that the daughter's doing the mothering or that the son is, um, very aggressive toward his mother, has no respect for her. But usually, you know, it's harder to find that in the public eye. Usually that gets hidden, right? Um, okay, so that, did you think of anything, Christy? I mean, I don't blame you if you didn't. Um, still not, Professor. That's okay. Okay, Roshani.
Roshani. Okay, Fatima. Professor, I uh, I say I'll be done. You didn't come up with anything. No judgment. Okay. Um, Toma. Yes, Professor. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I found an example in my community, uh, like uh, a girl who is got married in, uh, like uh, who, when she was in studying in uh, seventh grade. So it was very early ages, like uh, 14 years old. So um, when she was uh, uh, starting in class five, she was falling in love with a boy, um, but she even don't know. Uh, the, about sexism or any family planning. And uh, so at that time, uh, her, family, uh, uh, her family was uh, educated. So her parents uh, always told her uh, when they know about the situations of her daughter, like uh, in very early ages, she, uh, she was falling in love uh, with a guy. So they just uh, not wanted to do her uh, daughter like these things so that's why um, they just force her to um, that's why they just uh, um, and tell her that to don't do like the things but she uh, didn't get her uh, parents whatever her parents said her to and one day she was uh, um, go through and uh, get married with a guy uh, who who one uh, she was loving and uh, uh, even her family do not know about anything about she got married. And uh, um, one day she was come back uh, in her family and tell that uh, I was got married with the guy who is one I love. And, um, but after her married, um, she give birth to babies and uh, uh, her family, uh, her parents do not allow her ex accept her babies uh, because uh, they even do not know about anything why she did like this though they told her to do not do these things then um, even she do not know uh, when she give birth to uh, babies uh, she do not take care uh, properly because uh, without planning she just give birth uh, uh, these two babies and um, she was not so proper educated uh, because uh, she got married in very early ages. Uh, and um, so I think uh, it's uh, the example like. It's a poem. Okay, so, so her parents arranged a marriage or not? She just fell in love and she went and got married in seventh grade? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Her um, parents uh, even not allowed her to get married in their I business. see. Okay. But now she's overwhelmed? Does she just not know yes, how to take care of it? Yeah, okay. Oh, boy. Yes. How old are the kids? The kids, the one kid are four years old and the one is two. Okay, I hope that they don't start controlling their mother, you know. Um, yes. <laughs> so, Fayaza, can you think of an example? Uh, yes, Professor, I have. Uh, in my community, when I was working, uh, uh, when, when someone uh, divorced, like, they have to give the reason. Uh, for that, uh, one, one of the girls, she, uh, she came to our office. And she's very teen, I think 16 or something. Yeah, 16. Uh, she got married before two years. And she told that, uh, and the boy also same age. They both are same age. And she came and she gave the reason, my boy, my husband is going to play after when he's coming to the world. Because they both are 16, right? So so uh, the, the boy, he he's... He's playing cricket, so usually he's going to play in the evening. So the girl said, like, he is now father, so how he can going to play now? Like, uh, uh, 
and the boy uh, he gave some reason like uh, this girl uh, doesn't wash my dresses and she's acting she's being like a child and she has a baby and she's not taking taking care of her baby and all but they both love and marry but uh, the thing is like they both are teen but they don't have the uh, like a proper like family structure how to do uh, everything and all so uh, after that like um, our, our, our counselor uh, she gave the counseling you know so she like she told that if he sell his bed uh, i will go go with him like i will live with him like so if he what like he has the bed like to play the cricket so bat and ball so if he sell that i will uh, live with him so okay. that is the uh, like concern like because they both are child right so they yeah. don't have the that yeah. proper thing okay so oh. that's so the grandparents aren't helping them no they don't talk with them because they both are love and married right so they are not talking with them at all oh boy what income where do they get an income the boy uh, i think he gave up uh, his studies and he went to the work some kind of employing work you know so he after he came back from the work and he's going to play that is the problem to her like <laughs> yeah okay yeah crazy <laughs> yeah um, did you think of somebody in the public eye no professor okay mahira hello professor yeah somebody i know that is my mother's sister she was married at the age of 17 uh, and in our community in bangladesh uh, at that time uh, like in 1996 like that time she was got got she got married uh, at the time uh, it was a tradition that uh, now also the girls will marry a man older like than that like my uh, uncle is 15 years older than her so she her father my grandfather uh, was and now also very dominant mm, uh, uh, she uh, all of uh, our uncles and aunts have to do Uh, whatever he says uh, and my uh, grandmother is like protecting mother typical wife caring about so she loved her daughter so much she was pampered uh, a lot she got whatever my aunt she got whatever she wanted um, and then she got married and uh, her daughter she had a daughter and now she my cousin is 23 years old but when she my cousin was small also she used to dominate her mother at a very young age my cousin uh, was very intelligent and knew to learn things quickly uh, so she dominated my uh, aunt um, and now also she dominates my aunt is very like uh, Um, but my be my aunt also managed a joint family uh, she was not also that kind of like not very delicate type of girl but she was raised like a delicate kind of girl by her by my grandmother okay okay did you think of a public one in public uh, i think uh, many uh, many cases speaking like um, sexually or mentally victimized like many actresses get they, they do suicide we get hear the news that they have done suicide this actress do the suicide yeah do you guys know about taylor swift yes professor yes singer yeah so Uh, I had a student last year. She said Taylor Swift. She'd been abused, right, by her boyfriend or something. Um, I didn't know if that was a good example or not, but that was one in the public eye. Um, Kasturi, did you find something? Um, <clears throat> so, Professor. Uh... when i went to my village 
uh, I got to hear a story. I have to say, so <clears throat> there is a girl who is very young, and um, she did uh, an eloped marriage. She loved a young boy, and she got married with him. But both of them, uh, being <clears throat> younger in age, they are not aware of anything at all. And they are not aware of <clears throat> sexism and motherhood at all. So. <clears throat> After a year of um, their marriage, the girl gave birth to a baby boy, but then she was not aware of uh, breastfeeding as well. So <clears throat> uh, she just breastfeeded her, breastfed her child with uh, only one um, breast, um, breast. So uh, the other, the another breast, um, <clears throat> it got swollen. I think uh, it is because uh, because the milk inside the breast it got accumulated and <clears throat> and uh, so uh, she got treatment however uh, still she is not uh, not treated well uh, in the society I mean uh, she is not liked by her family members and her in-laws as well because uh, she did uh, activities that is not liked by other people. So uh, I think that uh, we human beings uh, often encounter issues because of our own uh, perceptions and mentality. Because I mean, uh, if the girl uh, <clears throat> followed the instructions given by her parents or her other family members, then she, uh, she would never get <clears throat> into trouble. I mean, uh, she would not... Uh, she would not suffer at all. I mean, if she had uh, followed, uh, if she had followed whatever she was taught, whatever she was instructed to do, then she might not have given birth to a child at a very young age because uh, the age she is now is the age that a woman should be educated, or uh, that uh, it is the age where a woman should be independent and a good leader, I have to say. Um, yeah, I think that uh, because she was, she's not aware of motherhood and sexism and reproductive health as well, uh, she is uh, under uh, various sorts of issues and troubles at the moment. And uh, yeah, as she is not aware of things at all, uh, she is not able to take care of her child as well, because if uh, she um, she is not aware of breastfeeding at all, right? So uh, we we all know that uh, if a child does not get milk from her uh, milk from his or her mother. Uh, <clears throat> at a younger age for, I think, for around a year, then uh, there is a high possibility of getting malnourished. And so I think that the child will probably become a victim of malnutrition soon. <laughs> yeah. So I think that we can relate this person's story with Presafni because like uh, she is not educated, she is not aware of uh, things and because of that she is not uh, going to become a good mother. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so Nuzali typed up something, okay. A book named Tears Behind the Veil by Shida Mayrab. It's about a family with one girl, child. The mother was Indian, the father was American. The father died when she was 12. Uh, they were alone. Her mother went to India with her. After they returned, the mother was forced by his parents to marry an Indian man. And that man was not... Uh, didn't want to keep the daughter with them. Then the stepfather forced the girl to marry an old man. Her only desire was to go back to America, but she couldn't. After she married, her mother also couldn't come to see her. The restrictions are put by the husband of her mother. Yeah, the little girl has to marry an old man, a very aggressive, when she was 14. 
from then on, she has to work for him. He has to be, uh, she has to be the sex object and do everything for him. If she ignored him, she was punished. She's fair skinned. She has to face lots of problems. Uh, personally, I cried a lot while I was reading it. Um, she's okay. All right, good. Yep, that would be a victimized, a case of victimization. I figured that you would probably have quite a few examples <laughs> of this. Um, all right, anything in the public eye, Nuzali? Um, thanks for typing that in if you can't do the um, microphone. So that's good. Um, Kaula, did you have something? Are you there, Kaula? Well, okay, Marzia. Yes, professor. Yes. Uh, professor, uh, Anna, about an example, uh, I know a girl like uh, she she got married in the age of maybe seventeen or eighteen, uh, and uh, uh, the reason that she got married was that she was in love with with a, a boy actually the boy was older than her and also he he had another marriage before her and also uh, he left his wife and he had a, a son as well and then she, this girl fell in love with him and uh, she was although she was a school student but she didn't care about her education and she just thought about how to like how to live with him and she was completely happy to get married. And uh, after that, like their family agreed and they married. So because she was uh, like, she uh, she was so, so like 17 uh, is too young for uh, living in a marriage life. And she went to a family that the mother was, uh, the mother of the, the boy was old. And also, like there was not anyone who take care of the family, so she she had to work in home all the time, and also she had to take care of the child of uh, the the son of her husband because uh, he he divorced uh, her mom, and and she had lots of responsibility. After that, she could not attend the school, and uh, uh, like uh, she had lots of problem in her home uh, in her husband home. Because like no one was no one was uh, caring that what she was going through because everyone was saying on the family that she herself wanted to come in our home, so she has to uh, like uh, she has to cope with the situation, and also like the mom the mo the her her mother-in-law was uh, couldn't work at all, even she needed someone to take care of her in somehow. And after her marriage, like her husband was always saying here that, yeah, this is my this is my life, so you should you should cope with it. And she uh, she uh, quite uh, she quit studying. She didn't go to school anymore, and uh, she gave a birth a, a girl uh, a daughter, and her daughter like. Uh, uh, her daughter uh, also was not in a good situation because she couldn't take care of her. She always had to be busy with the uh, housework and also take care of everyone who was, uh, for example, the 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 uh, her brother in Ross in Ross uh, clothes should be washed on time. Uh, the home should be cleaned. The meal should be cooked well. So, uh, like, she had to cope with all the situations, and uh, uh, once, like, once she said, she said that uh, she, because she was not able to tolerate it anymore, so her husband family decided to send her back in her her mother's home, and then she said that because she was afraid of this, and because she it was a love marriage, so she didn't want to look at her parents' face and say that. I did it and after this I cannot and she said that she had to cope with this so uh, like getting I think getting marriage 
in an early uh, age. Uh, it's it's bad for both sides, boys and girls. But the main uh, sacrifice will be the girl because uh, she will lose many things because the societies uh, believe because of the cultures, uh, men can do anything and it's okay for them according to societies and culture, but girls cannot, then they have to sacrifice their studies. They have to sacrifice their feelings, what they like, what the situation they prefer to live just because of a decision uh, that they, their self takes. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure if it was like an arranged marriage, of course, her parents didn't want her to live on that situation. And maybe they wanted to hear her daughter divorce because uh, of course, parents cannot tolerate to see the, their daughter in a bad situation. But it was a love marriage and every, everybody knew that, oh, Zakia is in love. Oh, everybody talked uh, like behind her back. So they, she finally get married and she really, uh, she really had a, a bad, uh, like a bad marriage life. But after I, right now, I have no idea about her because uh, I came to Bangladesh and I don't know what happened to her, but I wish her well. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. There's the fantasy, right? You're in love with the idea of being in love, uh, but yeah. then there's the reality. Yeah, so. it's yeah. She she like we were uh, we were not too close. Like we had uh, an age differences, but she were uh, like uh, friends with my sister and also their family. Were we were like in, in contact. And she, after that, like sometimes she cried and talked that uh, the real life and the imaginary life is uh, completely different. Like sometimes, like she says, before her marriage, she lived in her uh, dreams, in her imagination. But right now that she faced the, that these two worlds are completely different and she is too young for that. So uh, she says that uh, she always told us that do not decide uh, like take uh, do not marry in an early age and also she says that uh, even if you love someone uh, don't marry soon and it was her advice to younger girls that do not marry in an early age because you cannot cope with it okay so you wonder how many of those mothers-in-law right they were victimized when they were young mothers, right? Young wives. And yeah, so probably. they got victimized. And so when they got older, they victimized their daughter-in-law, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I think if they are educated, it's my belief, if they are educated, when they are victimized, they will not allow another girl to be the same as her. But they are not educated. They think, they think that if they went through that things, then yeah. after it's another culture, they, sh they also should have the same experience. I think that the education is really important for women because educated women, I believe, all, will always support women. But uneducated women always think that what we, what we went through, that generation after us also should experience the same. Yeah, I think it's too often that women go after other women, right? That's, that's a bad thing. Um, Amina, what about you? Uh, yes, Professor, I have an example. Uh, like uh, in, in one of the girls, uh, like who even didn't finish uh, her school uh, because of uh, her parents, like her parents wants uh, her to get married at a very young age. And also uh, she's only the, the daughter of, of her parents, just only one. Okay. Uh, then, then after that, she got married with a guy. Uh, the persons, uh, the persons only, uh, she didn't love her, and also her parents uh, know about him. 
so they gift Mary to uh, to her to to him, and and then after maybe one year, uh, she she was uh, pregnant, and then uh, when uh, she is giving birth, uh, she had an operation because of uh, giving birth, uh, because she was uh, so young and also she's uh, uh, she's a short girl. Then uh, after the operation, she couldn't even do anything, the housework and, and outside the work, anything. After that, after that uh, then her husband fell in love with other girls, with other girls, because uh, her wife couldn't do anything and even uh, he always need to help her like to go like even to drink a glass of water and to have to do other works and after that and then she she always said her parents that your your my husband is doing this this but you couldn't do anything when she's giving me married getting uh, getting me want married but now i'm facing all the problem you should help me uh, help me out of this house. The the child and the daughter said to her parents like that. But uh, the parents said, I couldn't have, we couldn't have that to you now. It's your responsibility uh, to, uh, to find out the situations, to solve out the situations. But uh, still, she's, waiting, she's facing uh, that kind of problem. That's my uh, example, Professor. Who, is she able to take care of her child? Uh, now, Professor, a little bit because of her operation, she couldn't do heavy work. Uh, like uh, she couldn't, uh, like she couldn't do heavy work. So, uh, so that is difficult to take care of her child. Yeah. Do you all have any of you heard about a fistula? Fistula. If, if a, a girl is really young or really small, she has a really long labor and it she gets a hole in her, um, somewhere in her body so that literally the, the like her feces and her urine starts going into her other body organs. And it it's, happens a lot. And she has no control over uh, urinating and defecating. And um, there's uh, Melinda Gates, I'm reading her book. And there's just whole hospitals for women who have had that experience. Um, I know a woman who went into a, it wasn't a hospital. They didn't operate on these women. There are houses that just is where they live because nobody wants anything to do with them. But of course, here they are, they're really young, they're really sick and they have babies. Um, and that's just because they got pregnant too early and it's still allowed to go on. But I mean, that is a real victimization problem. How can they ever dig out of it? Um, Let's see. Oh, the girl's name. Let's see. There wasn't a name. Oh, Melinda Gates. Uh, that's Bill Gates' wife. There was no one name of the girl who had the fistula. It's just uh, you can look it up. Actually, I'll I'll talk about it next time in the next class. It's a really extreme case of victimization. Um, so, Rafa, do you have an example? Okay. How about Sauda? Uh, hello, Ms. Professor. I have an example. Um, one of my friends, she uh, got early marriage and even she can't complete her study yet. Um, Let's see. Wait, it's hard to understand you. So um, there's some background noise there. Um, 
Go ahead, just slow down, talk loud. So can I read, write it in 10 books? Yeah, you can write it, go ahead. Um, Melanie, Thank are, you. are you there, Melanie? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, my example is a girl that I went to high school with. She ended up dropping out of high school and um, got married at a young age and had children. And um, she, I know that she was married twice and both of her husbands abused her actually. And she had children with both of them and she doesn't have either of her children now. And I know that it, but it um, is the end of her world when her children got taken away from her. And then someone that I know in the public eye, I think would be like actresses or um, female singers like Demi Lovato and Miley Cyrus. I know both of them were victimized from a, a really young age and they have articles about um, sexual abuse and everything that they went through from a young age. So you could type their names in the chat and see, I don't know if the other students have heard about these particular singers. Do they sing songs about abuse? Um, yeah, both of them do actually. Demi Lovato has several of them and um, Miley Cyrus, I don't know. I know she has a few, but I don't know the names of them off the top of my head. Well, you know, I, I, well, I'm just wondering how to spell the names of the singers. <laughs> okay, I'll type them in the chat. Yeah, okay. um, all right. Well, that's another issue is that there are some music glorifies abuse. So I had a student writing about the lyrics of various teeny bopper songs, including female artists, artists. And she says, this isn't art, this is abuse, right? Glorifying abuse. So the next goddess we do is the Aphrodite. She's the goddess of the arts. So you can think about whether you think some, some uh, what we call art is really not, right? It's really just like therapy or it's a cry for help. Some of it is... Um, glorifying abuse. Uh, we'll see. We'll see that next time when we um, talk about Aphrodite, which is not for a while. We have another day on this. Um, let's see, Trin. Do you have something? No, Professor. Okay. What about you, Dolana? Did you already speak, Dolana? Yes, Professor. Okay. I, I was looking at okay. I have an example. Like yeah. one of my cousin sister, like she was very uh, like young when she was in 12 years old. Uh, my aunt uh, like give like uh, want to got married her and uh, she like got married uh, to her with a guy uh, he much more older than uh, like <clears throat> my cousin sister and uh, when um, uh, when uh, she got married, she didn't know about the sexism and the motherhood and anything. And uh, she did not uh, complete uh, the like the high school. And she was in uh, only sixth grade education. And uh, uh, even though she did not. Uh, know properly about the menstrual uh, like um, <clears throat> process 
then uh, uh, in the in her marriage day like uh, <clears throat> she uh, she was playing like uh, playing uh, then uh, after her uh, after her married uh, she got uh, like pregnant and give a birth of a baby like and then uh, most of the time they are quarreling each other like the her husband and she because she had not enough like knowledge about the <clears throat> about the life and the uh, like uh, relationship of husband wife and uh, like mother suit and family and uh, all of the all of those things like she was in children <clears throat> then uh, uh, she always <clears throat> saying that you are the responsible for um, <clears throat> this condition because i am not uh, like uh, old enough for, for this to marry like um, and she um, uh, she did not take care of her baby and my aunt always trying to support her and uh, <clears throat> like uh, her uh, like mother in law always trying to quarreling with her like why uh, she did not um, <clears throat> like doing household work or uh, something like that so I think it's a great example for uh, me. <laughs> with the victim. Yes. Yeah, very good. Do you know anybody in the public eye? Not yet, Professor. I <laughs> didn't find. Okay. Uh, Rahima. Yes, Professor. I think I have a different story, which is like a current story. Uh, one of my friends got married, like she's not uh, get early marriage. Well, she's, if you last year she got married, she's about 19 or 20 years old. We are at the same age. But uh, I think that only child marriage is not the problem. The problem is operation on girls for their marriage. And uh, like, uh, let me finish her story. She got married and after a few months she got pregnant, but at the same time, there is a lots of uh, problem in her marriage, and then she have to abort her child, and then she broken her marriage. And currently, one of my friend is uh, one of my closest friend. Like she has a good education. She her family has a good background, you know, economically and uh, like in educationally. But still, her mother operate like uh, emotionally, uh, telling her that you're not beautiful enough. After a few years, uh, after a few years, no one gonna take you for marriage just get married uh, looking at rich guy and settle down like she's facing this problem and sharing with me like i'm speechless how to console her what to tell her currently this is happening and she's like uh, totally in depressed she's telling me native uh, daily regularly and i'm also trying to console her but i don't have any really words what to say her so i mainly think that and i also saw many stories where a uh, young child has got married, but still she's having a happy family with her, uh, in her marriage, she's happy. But it's about when the girl is not ready, she's not willing to marry, uh, whatever the age is. That's the matter. Yeah, okay. Um, what would happen if she just kept going to school? Would her parents just, they wouldn't pay for it. So she'd have to find money or... I'm telling her to ask for another year so that you can do a uh, like part-time job so that you can carry out your yourself. But she's saying that you don't understand my situation. Like they're not gonna give me any time. Like they are just oppressing me to get married. I don't know how to tell her how to console her, but she's facing this problem. That's terrible. I mean, she's got 60 years of her life, like, oh, well. All right, Jacinta. Yes, I have one example uh, in my community. So uh, 
so uh, uh, the a uh, girl uh, who got married uh, uh, in uh, grade nine plus uh, actually in our community we are mostly christian people so she uh, fall in love with muslim so her parents and our community uh, uh, know that uh, and uh, and told that don't marry a muslim guy you have to marry a christian boy so uh, she doesn't accept because uh, she'll fall in love uh, already with uh, that uh, mu uh, that uh, muslim boy so they escape one day they escape uh, from their family the girl's family also don't know and the boy's family also don't know uh, uh, they uh, they get married um, so in, um, uh, in, um, they got married in a uh, muslim culture uh, and uh, the uh, christian girl in our community she uh, um, turned a uh, christian to a uh, muslim so uh, 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 after one uh, one week we in our community we heard that she got married and uh, that boy and um, uh, our community said that uh, if she come back uh, in our community uh, she will kill she uh, she she will get, get killed uh, people will kill her uh, and uh, and also her husband so uh, still she uh, can't uh, came uh, our com our uh, society and she ha i think uh, her uh, she has uh, communication with her parents parents or relatives family but in our community uh, she doesn't allow and i think she has no idea about uh, in a uh, in a uh, grade 9 class uh, she uh, i think she has no idea about uh, um, cooking and uh, um, family care or child care uh, after her marriage uh, i heard that she was torturing by her mother in law uh, because uh, she was uh, uh, well, uh, she wasn't well enough for, for cooking. So uh, she was married. Uh, that boy, uh, he yeah, is the eldest uh, um, uh, son in the family. So uh, all, all, uh, all, all, all. Uh, uh, all decision or and all works and all power uh, when uh, she uh, got uh, uh, she didn't uh, um, accept uh, and uh, um, the uh, uh, mother-in-law was torturing her i heard that so it's uh, uh, i uh, um, still she uh, uh, we are uh, we are uh, professor can you hear me now i can again it died for a minute oh, um. so she's getting tortured by her mother-in-law and she can't go home or she'll get killed and she has a little kid is that it just see that I guess, I guess, luck. Um, okay, so let me see. Is somebody has Sadia? Have you talked yet? No, Professor, but I have one story. Okay. So, in my relatives, so one, um, my relatives, like my cousins, like when she's in uh, 16 years old, so, so she's in uh, like, uh, get uh, is fall in love with a guy, but her parents didn't even allow to like they, they didn't accept the relationships. So when she's in like uh, seventeen, her or seventeen or sixteen, the, the the same age, her parents decided to uh, get married with a guy. Uh, the guy is uh, like a doctor, so uh, she didn't even know that the, her 
parents are decided to marry her so uh, when uh, like they are arranging the program uh, program the era marriage program she knows that today is his uh, today is like her marriage like the program is like two days is her marriage day so she's like shocked that how my parents like uh, didn't even uh, uh, get my suggestion that uh, to like uh, is is um, is i am angry or not not so like she is shocked like uh, and she didn't even say anything uh, so after her marriage uh, after her marriage like she is she didn't even uh, interested to like uh, sexually active with her husband so she, she always requested refused that uh, like i am in the period so please uh, didn't even do that so when uh, like uh, after like three or four days so like her mother like the the uh, woman's mother like uh, was very close to her uh, like her daughter's husband so she uh, like uh, tell her like her daughter's husband that now my daughter's uh, period is off so you can do the uh, like you can uh, do what you want so Uh, that day like that that night like uh, her husband's like forcefully did the uh, uh, forcefully like do the uh, do the physically something like that so she's like uh, she's like shocked that her because um, her uh, husband didn't know that her fears is off so she knows that her mother's like Uh, uh mothers like uh, uh, shared the news with her husband so after the morning she is like she asked her mother that why you do that so she said that uh, like uh, you are now it's like you are now uh, married so it's your it's your uh, duty to it's like uh, duty to like to fulfill your husband desire so like now she is not happy with the relationships with this so after like one year her like her mother uh, told her like daughter uh, daughter husband that now you are like uh, you have to uh, you are like Uh, have to uh, have to go to the family planning so uh, like uh, he then so she get pregnant so like she also uh, doing her study in the after her marriage marriage life so when her first child is like arrive arrive so she didn't even take care of her children so her uh, like her grandmothers like the daughter's mother took care of all her children like she is now like two children that uh, both are daughter so she didn't even take care of her children uh, didn't even take responsibility about the family she didn't even uh, like good relationship with her husbands also but but uh, the, but same way the like her like grand is like mother uh, the daughter's mothers take care of the whole family and also take care of the children's too and uh, now she is suffering from like a bipolar disorder and now she's many times she attempts the suicide so is now she is in the under treatment so it shows like she she always play a victim roles in the like in the relationships yeah okay i was wondering if anybody had an example with being suicidal because you know all this victimization that that'll happen um yeah i i do want to emphasize it's it's not that hard to get yourself in a really victimized um situation um i was pretty surprised myself how easily i could end up with little kids and no place to live um for three kids and no jobs it's like how did i get into this situation it just doesn't take much you know so it also uh, runs her career so like basically she is also a doctor he's a, she is a like a dentist but now for the like mental situation she has also lost her career also so who's the who's the doctor the the victims like he also a doctor like she is also a doctor but she is she is like lose her career because now she is like the bipolar disorder patient so she also like lose her career for this okay she is not happy in her family also and also she run the career also so this is the woman who got married at age 16 yes yes she eventually finished school and became a dentist 
yes yes because her family supported to uh, for, uh, supported to be as like something like in the future like her family supported and also financially supported for her education but they didn't allow her, her to uh, to get her get her uh, like uh, her favorite person that he loved to marry but they forcefully like get married to the the guy they chose Okay, okay. All right. Now, who else hasn't spoken? Nizali, have you spoken? Uh, professor, I would like to say an example. Okay. okay. This is an example of a woman who is from my country, Myanmar. Uh, her character is related to Persephone. Uh, she was my classmate uh, when I was at a school. After completed uh, her high school, she got married the one uh, who loves her. And now she has uh, two children, uh, but uh, her mother and father-in-law didn't like, and they hate her so much. They always escort her at any times, even uh, they do not like her children as well. Uh, although uh, her husband loved her very much and her husband always set her and motivate her not to care what what his parents said what his what his parents always say her but she felt she feels so sad in that house uh, because for not get, for not getting peace as she got married by leaving her family and for that reason, uh, she separated her husband for his parent, from his parents and they are spending and they are alive together going to other, uh, to other village. Okay. So, okay. That, that was Habiba that said that? Okay. Yes, Professor. Okay. So they're actually going to move the small Yeah, family. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's lucky. Because she is not getting peace in that house, uh, in their, uh, in her husband's house, that's why. Yeah, okay. That's pretty bad. I don't understand why people do stuff like that, but okay. Who else hasn't presented yet? I've lost track. Um, let's see, October. So, um, Roshani, did you have an example? Um, yes, Professor. Similar to that, like in my place, uh, I, I was, uh, that was my neighbor actually who got married uh, before her assy. That's her 10th grade. And, um, you know, marrying is one of the, taken as the first priority for women. So it's, I don't know why she got married so early. And uh, after she got married, she got so, lots of torture, you know, because one main reason is the dowry. She was from a poor family background and dowry is something very important to the you know uh, male family so uh, she was very humiliated after marriage and the before marriage the family confronted that they will you know educate their child uh, their daughter they will you know fulfill all their necessities and they will make her uh, study after even after marriages but right after their marriage it didn't happen and it uh, didn't work out as uh, they're promised and um, the girl was um, violated and um, actually she was also just uh, as she uh, she was criticized for uh, for having male friends in her schools uh, she was blamed that you have such a friend so if you might have done something wrong so she uh, she was very misbehaved by the families she was tortured humiliated every day and she was pregnant at the middle but then the family uh, the husband it's so uh, sad and very pathetic situation that they killed they just you know punched the uh, baby and then the, the baby couldn't survive uh, and finally she couldn't hear uh, bear that trauma and she had a mental depression and um, she went through a lot of those things but uh, later on it was too much, right? And uh, all the society said that the marriage could, cannot be, you know, extended further because it's not good for both of them. So uh, she was treated and uh, then, she, uh, then now she 
got a divorce and now she is living uh, her life now now she is uh, writing a poem she is uh, you know writing points on whatever she has done she uh, she has explored herself she has uh, she is also studying plus working she has now become an independent woman and very strong in herself so which is i found very powerful very um, though she passed through all those things uh, she has been able to make it something like that so um, this is something i have closely found on my place and for the public eye i have one singer as uh, it's uh, anju pokhrel yeah, anju uh, anju panta actually anju panta in nepali music industry so uh, she is one of the finest and most popular singer in nepal and uh, she has something similar story she had uh, you know she had a good career and she married with some uh, same uh, person with uh, same field but then she had a family issue every time she has trust issue every time and as a singer she had to travel a lot of place meet a lot of people right but then uh, she was being judged by her profession and for not balancing a professional life which is such a uh, nonsense i guess because a family should understand uh, her profession and everything so uh she uh, that time also she was very humiliated tortured uh, beaten by her husband uh, insulted in a public places and so on so on but then after uh, divorced as well she was uh, again um, you know misbehaved and uh, she was again uh, like blamed for so many reasons and uh, this is seen that women are always being blamed either she is married or either she is not before marriage she was uh, uh, while she while she was married she was um she was uh, she was misbehaved or she was just told that she is this um, maybe she has some fault that's why she is you know being humiliated she had maybe she has this fault that's why she is uh, being beaten uh, or after divorce they uh, people say like she cannot handle any relationship maybe she is so weak that she couldn't even handle her you know husband or so on so on so which is something bad and later on she used to sing a song like very sad song related to break up related to their marriage and so on so on but then as the time passes she has she had only her daughter who uh, was with her and she was her actually strength so uh, she uh, she didn't let uh, she 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 thought herself that even though i suffered this much i would um, make my daughter something uh, i would make my daughter educated and into the topmost position so uh, she fought with the society she fought with the uh, various kinds of tolerance and then uh, now she is a very very successful singer in our country she has like um, and uh, her daughter is also actually a very uh, you know good model and now she finally after few days she um, she has also written a book relating to the humiliation relating to the you know all these things uh, actually a caste discrimination as well so she was from a high caste but then uh, though uh, there is something that uh, she used to um, get uh, discriminated of so um, she has all those things in her book and, and now she is something uh, she has written she has reached to the top and she um, yeah i could i could say that she is now successful and happy in her own life uh, the way she is living now she is also married yeah i guess uh, before one year, year so this is a story that is, uh, from the uh, very uh, discriminated phase human uh, humiliated phase and very uh, you know uh, sad phase now she has turned into something um, great by her own so this is a success plus like hidden side story i could figure out in my place professor so what is her name again uh the singer is actually anju panta yeah do you want to type it yes yeah, sure okay thanks um i guess we're out of time i don't know if so if any of you wanted to start the next class by bringing in your examples um that's fine. You just have to let me know. Um, okay, well, there's a reading for next time. It's about, um, I'm trying to remember because I did this a while ago. I think it's pornography, but let me see what it is. Um, yeah, the next one is pornography, which is pretty awful. 
And um, you can bring examples from your own country. Like I really do wonder how much porn there is out there in developing countries, how much people know about it or don't know about it. Is it on the web? Is there child porn? Um, I know that the highest levels of um, pornography, of course, are the United States, but also Saudi Arabia. I think that's funny because sexuality is so repressed and women are so not allowed to be out in the public or to wear, show any skin, but the pornography is pretty crazy. So I guess we'll do pornography next time. That'll be fun. Uh, and um, I might think of something else to have you think about. I'll just let you know. All right, take care. You too, um, Professor. Actually, I think I have a section where I have poetry. Uh, the, bo the book I had had poems and little essays. So I'll have you read that and bring your own examples of some poems or some essays about women who have been abused. Is that okay? That sound good? Yes, Professor. Yeah, okay. Yes, Professor. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you, Professor. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, Professor, Bye. thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you. Oh, um, stop recording.